Hello, welcome to video four of the Red Cat Basics workshop video series. Uh, my name is Ray, and in this video, we're going to go over exporting and importing data. Uh, once you have data captured in your project, you can use the data export and reports tool to access it. So this is of course useful at the end of a study when you might need to export the data for analysis. Uh, it can also be useful uh, over the duration of the study as well um, for things like reporting, uh, keeping track of progress, and important metrics. Um, one example uh, for some of the studies that we have in progress in REDCap right now uh, at the center where I'm working, uh, on a weekly basis I extract a list of new adverse events and I send that in a file to the PI uh, to review with the study staff. Uh, so depending on what your needs are for data export, um, you can sort of tailor uh, the REDCap data export tool to that. So I'm going to go to this link here on the left, which is going to take me to the report and export tool. Um, you have all kinds of options for exporting data. Uh, you can s select based on the specific form that you might want for specific visits, applying filters for um, different uh, participant uh, characteristics. Um, and uh, creating custom reports for data export is covered in quite a bit of detail in the data management, security, and randomization course uh, and, and the video series as well. So I'm not going to go into very much detail on the, this here, but if you are interested, you can check out that video series uh, with Steve. What I'll do instead is do sort of a quick um, introduction to using the data export tool. So uh, rather than creating a report and getting very into sort of uh, uh, filtering or, or selecting subsets of data, I'm just going to show you what it looks like to export all of the data for this project by going here under option A, all data and export. And you have some different options to choose from. Uh, so firstly, the export format. Uh, conveniently, if you're going to be using any of the software for data analysis, you can uh, select to export your data into a format that's compatible with SPSS or SAS or R. For today, I'm just going to export it into uh, Excel as a CSV file. And if you're doing that, you have two different options to export the raw data or the labels. And that refers to um, which, which values you're going to be exporting for, for each field. So the raw data is the numerical coded value. So if you remember the de demographics form uh, that was created in the first video, uh, the coded value one refers to female uh, for sex, two refers to male, and three refers to other. So if I was downloading the raw data, I would only get the value one, two, or three in my data export file. Whereas if I export the labels, that's when I would get the words female, male, or other. So the actual labels associated with each of those coded values. Since typically the raw data is more useful for data analysis, that's what I'm going to choose to download today. And on, on the right here, we have our de-identification options in case this is a, a concern with the data that you're downloading. If you have any identifier fields, then you can choose to have those removed um, or have the record ID hashed. Uh, we don't have any identifier fields and I'm not particularly concerned about that for this case. Um, you can ha remove text fields uh, as well as dates. Or if you need to know, for example, the relationship between dates, um, you know, things like did visit two occur within one week of, of baseline, you can instead choose to have all the dates shifted by uh, a random value. Um, they'll all be shifted by the same value, so it'll uh, retain the relationship between dates but you won't be able to tie the date of a person's visit uh, you know, to a particular participant. Uh, so I'm fine with leaving all of these unselected and I'm going to export this data. So clicking now on the icon on the right to download it. And here we go, so that's downloaded my CSV file of this data. I'm gonna open it up in Excel. Um, I'll just point out also that um, I've added data for a couple more subjects 
um, just to make this slightly more interesting to look at. So looking at each of the column names along the top, these should be familiar because um, it's all the variable names that were chosen uh, when these forms were being created in videos one and two, as well as here is the CVLT form that I added in the last video um, from the, the Red Cap, uh, CAMH Data Dictionary. And here are the coded values that I entered into REDCap for each of these subjects. Here's my subject one, two, and three. So the coded values for sex, for ethnicity, here are the values for date of birth. Uh, so the only, uh, the only column header that might not be familiar are uh, these underscore complete fields. So here's one for the demographics, underscore complete. Uh, here's the color appreciation sc scale, underscore complete. And what these values correspond to are, um, if we're looking back here in the forms that we created, it's this question at the very end where it asks about the form status. So a zero uh, corresponds to incomplete, a one is unverified, and a two refers to complete. So what I can tell here by looking in this column is that the demographics forms or the, the color appreciation forms for all three of these participants have been marked as complete. I can tell that by the value two there. All right, so this just about covers the basics of exporting data. So next we're going to cover how to import data into a REDCap project. And importing uh, data into REDCap is not a tool that I frequently use. Um, it could be useful if you had been collecting study data in uh, something like a spreadsheet before a REDCap project for that study was put into production. Um, maybe if you had to transfer data between projects. Um, I have also used it once when we had to make unusually large changes to the structure of a form uh, partway through the study, so after we had already been collecting data for several participants. What we had to do in that case was export the data for that form, make those uh, large changes to the structure of the form, then transform the data that we had exported and imported it into the new updated form. But this is not you know, typically required when you're making changes to a form in production, and uh, generally I would try to avoid it. Uh, if you do find yourself in a situation where you are wanting to import data, you the first step is to go to this data import tool. Um, we'll do a CSV import for today. And you want to first uh, select and download a data import template. You have two options. The first is with records in rows. Second is with records in columns. Personally, I always prefer the records and rows option because it looks more similar to uh, the data when it's exported from REDCap. You'll see what I mean shortly. So I'm going to download this form or this, uh, this template. And as a CSV file, I'm going to open it up in Excel. So this row, this top row of the template matches very closely the, uh, the top row of the data export file that we just looked at. It has the variable names of the forms that we've created in this project, with the exception that there are no calculated field, uh, cal calculated field variable names because you can't, uh, you can't import data into calculated fields. And the next step then is to enter data into this template. So if I had a spreadsheet, for example, where I'd been collecting this data um, or where I, where I had some data saved that I wanted to import it, I could uh, copy and paste those columns um, or somehow transform that data file so that the data from the spreadsheet um, was entered uh, you know, following this, this template. 
what I'll do because I, I don't have existing data that I want to import into this particular project is I'll just type in uh, the data that I would like. Um, I'll do this as a new participant. This will be my, my record ID number four. Though you also can use the data import tool to overwrite uh, data that exists already in, in the study for existing participants. Though I'm not really sure when you would necessarily want to do that. So I'll enter here uh, record number four. My next column is the date. Um, I'll go ahead and enter this as yesterday. And then next is the sex. You want to make sure when you're doing this that first of all you enter coded values um, rather than typing male or female I need to enter one or two or three with one. Um, and then also do make sure that the coded values that you're entering are uh, are correct based on the forms that you're uh, the fields in the forms that you're entering this for. So for example um, in this demo underscore sex field that Michael defined, I think in video one, the allowable values are one, two, or three. So I need to make sure that the value that I'm entering is a one, two, or three. This other I can leave blank. Ethnicity, I'll go with one again. Uh, date of birth. And in my underscore complete field, I'll mark a two to indicate that this form is complete. I'm going to leave the CVLT and the color appreciation scale blank for now. All right, so now that I've entered some data, I'm gonna save this as And I'll just add the suffix data to indicate that there's data in it, so that's not the blank template. Make sure you keep it in a CSV format. Now that I've saved this, I'm going to go back into REDCap. And scrolling down, I will find this file that I've just created. and select Upload File. So where this has taken me now is <clears throat> a page that summarizes the data that I've just um, tried to import. And conveniently, it'll color code for you whether there are any warnings or errors that you need to wor worry about, or even whether you're going to overwrite data that's already in your database. So since I've entered a new record here, a new record ID, all the data that I'm entering is new data, so I don't need to worry about overwriting anything. So I'm going to th scroll through and check. It looks like I have no errors and no warnings, which is great. But this data won't be imported until you click here, import data at the end. So now that I've done that, if I go look at my records status dashboard, Here's record four that I've just imported. And here is the, uh, the demographics information that I just entered for this person. All right, one last thing that I'll add about importing data is that there are some limitations. So first of all, you can't import metadata. So things like um, the date that a form was, was completed, that's something that, that can't be altered using the data import tool. There are also size limits on data imports of 700 kilobytes. And then finally, uh, the data file, the, the, the text in the data file that you're uploading should be in UTF-8 encoding. Uh, so special characters can be an issue if you're trying to import that. And that brings us to the end of video four, exporting and importing data. Our next video in the series. Uh, the final video is going to be on defining events, designating instruments, and then user rights and moving a project to production.